Okay, let's talk about the snug from with statements in depth. So formula when we write queries in SQL, the queries that format we plan to write will be like this. We have snugged some desired attributes from one or more tables where conditions are both tuples or tables. So snug from where there are three reserved keywords, and we prefer to write them in the uppercase, snugged from where. And they are followed by a cross. Select is followed by some desired attributes. From is followed by one or more tables. Where is followed by some conditions of tables of tables. So all the queries we will write later on data manipulation will be like this. Select some attributes from some tables where is this condition. So if you still remember, we have studied this in the range algebra before, right? If we plan to rewrite, if we want to know what does this mean, actually we can first write the original algebra expression about this uh, statement in state. Then you should be able to know what we are doing by writing the select from where statement as shown here. So from let's assume we are working on a relation R. And the select from where statement we showed before actually knows what. Select some desired attributes from one or more relation where is the condition? Actually, it denotes what? So you need to pay attention here. We have a keyword select. And it is followed by some desired attributes. Even though we run select here, actually it denotes the projection we learned before, right? So therefore, this statement actually denotes projection, right? Projection, we want to project some desired attributes, right? Therefore, we need to copy the design attributes here. We do, we're doing a projection here. Let me change the uh, font size to the subscript. So we're doing projection, project some design attributes, right? And inside it, we're working on what? We're working on a relation or a table, right? However, here we have some conditions for the tuples inside the table. Therefore, inside a projection, this operation, we're working on another operation. It is doing the selection, right? We're selecting some condition, right? And this condition denotes the condition we describe in a way across, right? Inside, we do a selection. Selection is some condition, and you know, we are working on a relation R. Right? So therefore, this, this select from where this statement actually denotes we are doing projection of some desired attributes. And which relation we are working on, we are working on this R. However, we have some condition for the tuples. Therefore, we have a selection with some condition as shown here. Right? So actually, this uh, relation algebra expression can be denoted by this select from where statement, as we show here. I hope you can follow me, right? So this select, even though it is select, actually this one denotes a projection. We project some desired attributes. This from denotes the relation or table we're working on. It denotes the target relation we're working on, right? And where is some condition? And we are doing a selection for the way across. We have selection with some condition on the relation R we are working on. So we do the selection first and do the projection of the desired attributes. I hope you can follow me, right? This is select from where statements we will write in the SQL. So you should know this. This select is a projection of some attributes. And this way it denotes some conditions. We need to do the selection in the relation algebra. So when you are studying in this section, I hope you can write down the range algebra expression first, and then you can translate this range algebra expression into the standard from where statements. It will be very helpful for you in the very beginning. It can help you to follow the ideas for its queries. And later on, as you are getting familiar with the standard from where statements, you can write down them directly, and you don't need to write down this uh, range algebra expressions. So, and I also need to make some comments on this select from where statements. Normally, we need to follow the template as you hear, select some attributes from some tables where with conditions. However, when we write it, 
Normally, we have a semicolon after it, denoting it is the end for the statement. The semicolon is usually necessary and required as a grammar requirement for the SQL coverage. So don't forget the semicolon. And for some queries, if we don't have any conditions, this where clause can actually be removed. You may see some SQL queries without this where clause. We only have select some desired attributes from some tables, and we can finish without this where clause. If we can see some queries like this, this notes actually we are doing a projection of some relation, right? We don't have any, we don't have any conditions anymore. If we see a query like this select from it equals to what? It equals to the projection of some desired attributes from some relations, right? So normally for the select from where statements, we need to have select, need to have from, and this where can be optional, depending on the requirements and the questions. Okay, so that's it for the select from where statements. In this section, we will also show lots of examples, and here we assume we are working on a relations as seen in this page. I mean the yet diagram is like this. We normally we assume we have three entities, the beers, the bars, and drinkers, and they each have some attributes, a name, manufacturer for beers, otherwise a name, address, and license for bars, and a name, address for number for drinkers. Among them they have some relations between beers and the drinkers we have this nux denoting this drinker nux a beer between the bar and the beers, we have sales and also have one attribute price, denoting this bar sell the beer with some price. And between the bars and the drinkers, we have frequency, denoting this drinker go through this bar very often. And in the following the slides, we assume we are working on some data analysis. And based on the knowledge we learned before, right, we can translate this year model, year diagram into some relations. Uh, we translate this year diagram into six relations, if you still remember the translation rules, right? For the entities, beers, bars, and drinkers, we can create a relation of beers with name, manufacturer, name is the key, bar with name, address, license, name is the key, and drinkers, name, address, phone number, and name is the key. And we can also translate the relationship into a relation as well. Now we have likes between the drinker and the beer, it was sales between bar and beer with some price and the frequency between the drinker and the bar. So we can translate everything to relations, right? These are nine attributes to know the keys for the relations. Furthermore, based on relations, according to our previous knowledge, we should be able to create some tables for it in our database system, right? So we can create some tables. Now we can create a table for beers with name char 64 as well as manufacturer 64 as a child will. And this uh, name is a primary key. It will be similar for the bars and drinkers. We can also create a table for them, right? The name are the keys for these tables. In a similar way, we can also create the tables for the relationships we, we showed before. We can create a table for likes between the drinker and the beer. So we can create a table likes, drinker, beer, the child 64, we're going to set the primary key of this relation of this table to be the drinker and the beer combined together. So here the drinker and the beer, they are the foreign keys, right? So we have a foreign key drinker reference to drinkers, and foreign key beer reference to beers. In a similar way, we can also create the tables for the sales and the frequency. So this other relation we'll be working on in the following slides as examples. So you just need to remember we have like six tables and in the following slide we can just show you some queries working on these uh, tables and we will not mention again what are the tables that I like and you can also check back to these two pages when we are discussing about queries in the following slides. Okay, so based on these tables we can create or we can write down some standard from where statements as shown here. Here let's assume we have a question. Given the beers, this table, and we will find what beers are made by Bush. Bush is a manufacturer, and we plan to find the beer names which are made by Bush. So before we show you this another from where this uh, statement, I hope you still remember we can write down this query with the right relational algebra, right? And we plan to find the names of the beers, right? Therefore, we are doing the projection of them. 
and we have some condition here. Go to production name and selection. Manufacture equals to bush, and we are working on the beers. It's table, right? So we will translate this uh, expiration, I mean the original algebra expiration in true select from where statements. We're going to write down the core as language H. We select the name, I mean PM name, right? From beers is a table where manufacture equals to bush. Bush is a string, and we're matching the manufacture with bush string. And followed by a same comma denoting the end of this uh, statement. Next, we were able to find all the beer names which are made by Bush, and which can show the returning result as on the right hand side. The returning result will be a table. However, this table only has one single attribute, it's a name, because we are doing the select name, right? We do projection of name only. We have one single attribute, one column, and inside it, there are all the beer names made by Bush. For example, we have Bud. Put a night and another B as you hear. So this is the person from where this statement. So the result is still a relation or a table with one single attribute, the beer name, and tuples with the name of each B are made by Bush, such as a bud as you hear, right? So this is an example. And besides this, I also need to reinstate we use many examples on beers in the lectures. However, we are not promoting the beers or drinking to the students. Uh, if you don't drink, then it will be very good, and you don't have to drink beers. We just use these beers as an example for you. Right? And personally, I don't drink neither. However, I think it will be very interesting to use beers as an example for delivering these lectures on database systems. Okay, this is about the from where statements, about the example.